last year, I've been on intermittent fasting trying to change the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Put it down. Put it down. Hi, this is Jen. I've been doing intermittent fasting. I've been trying that process for six weeks. This is the end of what I was considering phase one. All I've been focusing on is the intermittent fasting, 18 and 6. Uh, eating only within that six hour period of 24 hours. It's been fairly easy. A few times have been a little tough right at the end, but I just drank more water. And I've been doing pretty good. But now I'll start focusing on at least light exercise and a little bit more on the type of food I'm eating. So since this is uh, six weeks in, I started at 264. Today is June 20th, 2018. Yeah, this is the start of week week three. This is the start of week three. 463 pounds. Welcome. I'm Crush Equity. This is my 250 pound weight loss journey. And if you're new here, I started this November 10th, 2023. 546 pounds. And the vlog did since day one. Ups and downs, everything. And today, as promised, for a thousand sub, I would go over my history with fasting, why I didn't want to talk about it. So that's what this is. I just got done doing a full out, 100% AM wrap, nothing hold back. Jangled away from the camera so I didn't worry about the flying out of my hands. Kettlebell swings. Like last one, it was a tribute. And I'll explain that later. But that'll be at the end of the video. For me, my journey with fasting started in 2017. I started looking into things, how to lose weight. I was here in North Dakota and my mom was in around Denver, Colorado with my sister and my nieces. Obviously, I've been trying to lose weight my whole life. I've been a massive uh, food addict. Literally, I mean, addicted to food and cigarettes. Those are my two vices. Drugs and alcohol. I had bouts, various things for short periods. Uh, weed, I smoked weed a lot. Uh, but I never, the way I judge what I was truly addicted for, I never pawned or tried to hustle my way into any alcohol or weed or any other any drugs but I pawned a shitload of stuff over the years for cigarettes and uh, pizza that's what I know I'm addicted to I've known a lot of real addicts and that's just my judge if you're addicted to something you will hustle and pawn you know video games or some shit you own to get it so that's the main thing I had to deal with so I just I started to look and I came across Dr. Berg was the first I don't know Dr. Berg or Thomas Lauer. They were right at the same time. And the way I am, when I get into something, I dive into it. And so I just started hammering out videos. I mean, hours upon hours. I was taking online classes at the time uh, for college, really just dicking around. You know, I was living cheaply. I only needed like $700 a month to survive. I had a lot of free time. And so I just delved into it. Instantly related to it made sense to me. So I just began accumulating this knowledge on fasting I mean, it was kind of just made perfect common sense to me, right? Because your DNA has genetic memory going back millions of years long before we were humans That's just how DNA works evolution So that all those lifetimes of genetic memory It's in your DNA. There's no way in hell 5,000 years ago 10,000 years ago 50,000 years ago You know you had just meals lined up, right? 
unless you're a grazer, then you're just eating all the time. You have to because you have some, you're breaking cellulose into protein, but you need special organs like a gorilla or you need special stomachs like just about everything else. Of course, we don't have any of that. We have some enzymes in our mouth, but it's a survival. We, we eat vegetables to survive when we're starving. And you look at every predator on the planet almost, they go long periods of time without eating, and then they eat, and then they fast for a while longer, and they're fast, they're explosive, they don't melt away. And so, and it just never made sense to me. Plus, bro diet never worked. I've tried that and never succeeded. I binged. I mean, I would eat fine up here in the week, but then I would just binge like a fucking crackhead. And I mean, I'm talking, I'd eat two, three pounds of rice, you know, three, four pounds, five pounds of meat. And, you know, I'd make different things. A lot of the times I just ate rice and like usually chicken because it was cheap. I mean, I'd eat like six, eight chicken legs or fives and then just literally a giant bowl of rice with like a stick of, a stick of butter and like half a cup of soy sauce and learning about this. And then throughout the next year, I kind of did that. And then we come to 2018, around summertime, I was talking to my mom, we used to talk. I used to call her, she would call me. And really my mom was my best friend. And so I usually talked, tried to talk to her at least once every couple weeks, every week, something like that. We just were talking and my mom, my mom family's big, surprise, surprise. I, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of pictures. I don't have any pictures to show my dad. The only ones I have are in a photo album in Colorado. In a storage unit. But this is one picture I have. This is me when I was 10 years old. That's my sister and that's my mom. You know, I'm like, this is after I was 228 pounds when I was 10 and I got put on a strict diet and I got down to 187 and that was me right here. 10 years old, I was a size 34 waist, I'll never forget it, because my mom got me a pair of the old Jets Jinkos, because I was in the 90s, I was crazy about the Jinkos, I was one of Jinkos, she got me a pair of them, and they were size 34, and uh, it was probably the best shape I ever was in, but I was 10 years old, 187 pounds, I think I was like 5'5", five, five, something like that, that's my mom, she was a big lady, obviously, my dad was big, Six five, three hundred fifty pounds. So my mom was one hundred and seventy pounds when she graduated high school. She got into the trucking industry very early, driving cement trucks in the seventies in Alaska and then Texas. <clears throat> then she came back. She anyway, my mom and dad met in Texas, had my sister, and then moved to Alaska. And like uh, right before before I was born, then I was born in Alaska. But my mom. So that's what she did. She was a truck driver, oil filled. And then went into QHSC, which is safety, did that. And then she was a safety manager. She built safety, whole, whole safety programs for new companies from the ground up. And uh, never got what she deserved. Uh, she, she got shit on over and over again. She'd build up their whole safety. And then when they didn't need her no more, they just let her go. And I'm not going to get into that because I get salty as a motherfucker. So she was 170 when she graduated. And then high school and that was like her goal she always wanted to get back there and so fast forward to <coughs> excuse me on that i really pushed myself on that amp rap <coughs> so spring yeah it was, a, it was spring of 2018 yeah because i went there she was in amarillo she had moved to amarillo texas went moved in stayed in her spare bedroom i found a job i found a job and then <coughs> got an apartment like a couple months after that but that was a cool moment. We, my mom and I were actually bonded. We watched, she loved like The Voice and America's Idol, American Idol, those kind of shows. America's Got Talent, those were like her favorite things. She'd watch those every night they were on. And so that became our thing. And you know, I love to cook, I'm a good cook. And of course my mom, uh, my dad was a good cook. So that was, it was just cool. So I cooked dinner for us. We'd sit and we watched that and we did a lot of bonding there, and that and gardening, that was our bonding things. I didn't really necessarily think it was bonding when I was digging fucking 100 fucking rose holes way back in the day, but 
It was. That was our thing. We loved the uh, garden. And <clears throat> even when I moved into my apartment, I'd come over and cook dinner and we'd watch America's Got Talent and America's Idol or whenever, whenever they were on. That was like our thing. And, <clears throat> and then so I was looking at this fasting. I hadn't really done it. And I was right around, I was in the 520s, 530s. My mom was, well, 264 pounds. I know that because that's when. I'm sure I have a video of that weigh-in. I was learning all this stuff about fasting. And I don't remember exactly how, but it just came in. We started talking about it. And we were just like, you know what? Let's just do it. You know, it was my mom couldn't walk down the block. You know, she was struggling. She's 63. So we are just like, let's do the damn thing. So we did it. And my mom's, uh, I, it, it, it took, I took to it immediately. It just was supernatural and it felt good. And I kicked into keto within just a few days. And I was in full ketosis in less than a week. And my mom now, on the other hand, she struggled. <clears throat> she even looked at a carb and it threw her out. And it, it made her really frustrated and it took a good few months for her to really kick into it. It took her a lot longer to really get into it, but once she did, the weight just started to melt. Hi, this is Jan. I kind of waited a little bit long in my life, but I'm going to change that. Uh, I've started intermittent fasting, trying to get my life back together and get healthier to, as I get older. And it melted for both of us. I wasn't working out. She wasn't working out. I was walking a few times a week and she was working on it. She, you know, started just walking out a few steps and walking back, slowly building up. Over the course of about eight to nine months. And so she went from 264 down to the 170s. And I went from 530 something down to 390 pounds, somewhere in there. And I haven't done a little quick video weigh-in in a while, so that's what I'm gonna do, because we're back on track after some crazy shit went down. It was a rough couple months. 397.4 And we did it. I We did it just fasting and walking, doing like OMAD fasting. In a few multiple days, I wasn't working out. The only thing I did was walking. That's all she did was walking and some, uh, she had like, a, I got her like a shake weight and some stuff to try and move, get her to move her arms. And this is where the pain was with fasting and why I didn't want to talk about it. Literally about two weeks after she got to the 170s, we went on a family hike with my sister, my brother-in-law, my nieces, all of us. Colorado, we hiked up a mountain into a lake. And you, you don't understand how big of a deal this was for our mom to do this. She had her walking sticks, but she hiked up that bastard. And we spent the day up in that, that mountain lake. It was amazing. It was the coolest things we ever did as a family. And then literally, it was like, I don't remember the exact timeline, but it was like a week, maybe two. So it was right after that. She got diagnosed with stage four cancer. And it started here, and then by the time the car was everywhere. And I'm not gonna go through the details, all I'll say is I don't wish that on anyone. It took her and it took her quick. Within a few months, she was gone. That was August 2019. That was, she got, it made her, she got to her goal. She got to her goal and then And it would just seem like one of the most fucked up, cruel things. I didn't take it too well. You know what, I'm not even going to talk about after that. It doesn't matter. This is about my mom. No, I've been doing some form of fasting ever since. I've never stopped. Now, the difference is, is I went back to eating five to 10,000 calories a day and sitting on my ass 23 hours. And so I got right back to, well, obviously I was 546 when I started this. Yeah, that's, that's my story. I know that's not the most glamorous. Um thing, but I tried doing it. I tried writing a script. I tried doing it, like making an actual fancy video. Well, none of it was working. So I had to just talk. And then of course, 
I've come to accept it now. And, you know, I just, and Thomas DeLauer, Eric, uh, Dr. Berg, any of y'all ever watch this, you know, it was, it was short, but you, 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 you helped my mom do something she'd been trying to do for 45 years. It's just, you know, what do you, what do you do, you know? And it, she didn't even notice it until, so that's just how fucked up cancer is, you know? She had it in her whole body and didn't even know it. She was hiking up a fucking mountain. And, uh, you know, cancer is fucking bullshit. So that's, that's what I mean when I say, you know, I'm extreme, you know, fat adapted and all that. It's because I've been doing it for a while and I haven't eaten breakfast for like, I don't know, since 2017. And it's just, you know, differences. Like I'm saying, I would eat a extra large meat lovers pizza and then turn around and eat fucking because there was no getting a thing of ice cream and eating a little bit of it. You know, if I got a bag of potatoes, tater tots, I ate the whole thing at once. If, you know, I'd buy a pack of buns and a thing of hamburger and I'd make fucking four cheeseburgers. And then five hours later, I'd make another four cheeseburgers. And then I'd take, wait another few hours and I'd eat a whole thing of fries. I but at the end of the day, that's, that's a big part of what this is. This is an honest effort. This is a tribute to my mom. This is, I didn't do it while she was alive. <clears throat> but I know she's watching me now and uh, her and my sister believed in me has always believed in me my whole life my nieces my little three little shits they believe in me and <clears throat> I believe in me, and I just, we're doing the damn thing, and my mom's riding with me always, she's always my best friend, she's, I feel blessed to be able to, that my mom was my mom, and that's that, and then here, this MRAP is a tribute to you, mom, and all y'all watching this, subscribed, thank you, like all, I've said it multiple times, y'all mean the world to me. And I don't think I'd be doing this if it wasn't for y'all. Y'all helped me push, get through that initial phase. And uh, this is just the start. We're just getting started. So, enjoy. And I'll see y'all tomorrow for legs. Here we go. All holds barred. I'm pointing this way. That way I don't have to worry about the kettlebell flying out of my hands. I love you with all my heart, Mom. I might miss you. This is for you.
Honest effort. That's all my mom ever wanted. So where she's at, that's what I'm going to give her. An honest effort.